Glycosis perfectionatus, continuing our discussion about bleeding and coagulation series of lectures. We have talked about aspirin, the clinical uses of aspirin, the side effects of aspirin. Today we'll talk about drug drug interaction. If you're taking aspirin, please don't add blank. And this is the topic of today's video. Warning, aspirin is not to be added with other stuff. Big warning. And with that being said, now let's get started. Quick review, aspirin is antiplatelet, analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory, irreversibly inhibit the cyclooxygenase via acetylation. When you have no cyclooxygenase, you have no thromboxane E2, you have no platelet aggregation. Aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase 1 and 2, and I've talked about the difference between cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 in a previous video. When you have no cyclooxygenase, you have no thromboxane E2, no platelet aggregation. Aspirin is eliminated via zero-order elimination where the half-life is variable, and I've talked about this in a previous video in this series called Bleeding and Coagulation. Medical uses or indications of aspirin, myocardial infarction, acute coronary syndrome, AFib, TIA and stroke, prophylactic for antiphospholipid syndrome, vascular dementia, peripheral arterial disease, fever reduction because it's antipyretic, rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, erythromyalgia. And by the way, the word alga means pain. That's why aspirin is analgesic. No pain. No pain, no gain. Other uses for headache. gerish herxheimer reaction, protective against goldstone formation and colon cancer. Kawasaki disease, the only, the only way I'm using aspirin in a kid is Kawasaki disease. That's the only exception. Mondul's disease, which is superficial thrombophlebitis of the breast and anterior chest wall, with niacin to reduce flushing, hashtag flush the aspirin, and gout because it's analgesic and anti-inflammatory, in lone AFib and in temporal arthritis, but don't forget to give steroids. Do you know what happens when you give steroids and aspirin to the same patient? They have a higher risk of peptic ulcer disease because the cyclooxygenase is now history. So if you have to use both steroids and aspirin in the same patient, please protect the stomach from the acids by adding the nice proton pump inhibitors. What's the only exception of not using aspirin in a kid? It's called Kawasaki disease, aspirin plus intravenous immunoglobulin. If you like medical mnemonics and you are a visual learner, check out my friends at Pick Mnemonic. They are great. It's a great website about medical mnemonics. They are visual. They are like kind of story or a, an interactive kind of video. It's better than videos. Please check them out. And the link is in the description. They are not sponsoring this video. There are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. Aspirin can protect you from thrombosis, but it can also make you bleed. Welcome to life. Side effects of aspirin. Bleeding. Why? Because it inhibits thromboxane A2. GI upset. Why? Because it inhibits cyclooxygenase 1. Hyperventilation. Because it sim stimulates the respiratory center. Tinnitus. Sensory neural hearing loss. Respiratory alkalosis. Because of hyperventilation. Followed by metabolic acidosis. Because it's called acid salicylic acid. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Renal toxicity. Why? Direct toxicity called acute tubular necrosis, the toxic subtype, and inhibit cyclooxygenase, therefore no prostaglandin, therefore no increase in GFR. You end up with bad kidney. Asthma exacerbation. There are only two ways to coagulate, but there are several ways to bleed. Aspirin is one of these several ways to bleed. Aspirin can cause hyperthermia or fever because it's an uncoupler. It Aspirin can also lead to iron deficiency anemia due to GI bleed, and I've talked about how to diagnose GI bleed in the previous video. Aspirin can lead to idiopathic thrombocytopenia, Coombs positive hemolytic anemia, drug-induced esophagitis, allergy, sensitivity syndrome, and cellicism or aspirin toxicity. Drug-drug interaction. Aspirin plus warfarin? No, please no. And this is something to remember forever. If you forget everything in this video, please forget that you should not add aspirin and warfarin. Why? Aspirin inhibits the cyclooxygenase, which inhibits the thromboxane E2 formation, which inhibits platelet aggregation. Primary hemostasis is now history. Warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent coagulation factors, which are prothrombin 7, 9, and 10, protein T and protein S. When you have no coagulation factors, secondary hemostasis is history. 
you will never coagulate in your life and you risk bleeding even with minor trauma. This is horrible. You can bleed in your brain called intracranial hemorrhage. You can bleed in your gut, internal bleeding. You can, oh, it's horrible. Don't do it, baby. And if this is not enough, there is another reason why warfarin and aspirin together is a bad idea. Aspirin displaces some drug from their protein binding site. So let's say that this is the nice aspirin and this is its protein binding site. Aspirin should bind to this protein or this receptor because all receptors are protein. Shut up. Okay. And warfarin can also bind to a receptor. Warfarin also has rights. So warfarin will bind to his receptor and will live happily ever after. Until you add aspirin. Aspirin is capable of kicking warfarin outside of its receptor. Now warfarin is free in the bloodstream. When aspirin is floating freely in the bloodstream, it will do more warfarin stuff because it's free. When you're free, you're active. Only the free is active. Hashtag liberté. When warfarin was binding to its protein, this is not a receptor, I'm sorry, it's a plasma protein that's binding warfarin. It's not a receptor, I'm sorry. Plasma protein binding warfarin, warfarin is binding to the plasma protein, it's not active. But when it's free, when aspirin kicks its butt off the protein, it's now free and it's active. What will warfarin do? It will make you bleed, that's what warfarin is good for. So aspirin kicks warfarin out of the receptor and warfarin will do all of the crazy but warfarin stuff. So when you give aspirin and warfarin, you are increasing the toxicity of warfarin. Get it? Okay. Aspirin can kick other drug of their plasma protein, such as clopropramide and methotrexate. Methotrexate can cause mucositis and bone marrow suppression, as you know. So when you have a patient with rheumatoid arthritis and you are an idiot, you are giving them aspirin and methotrexate at the same time, please don't be surprised if they come complain of mucositis and leukopenia, neutropenia, etc. and increase risk of infection because you are a stupid idiot. Next, aspirin plus selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor the famous antidepressant. When you use them together, you're increasing your risk of platelet because there is some evidence that the SSRIs have some antiplatelet effects. Antiplatelet plus antiplatelet, not good for platelets, called bleeding. You will bleed and scream and platelets will not come to rescue. This is profound. Aspirin plus alcohol. Aspirin inhibits the cyclooxygenase, which is bad for your stomach. Alcohol literally destroys your mucosa lining. I mean, excessive alcohol, not just one beer every year. I'm just call, I'm talking about excessive. This increases the risk of GI bleeding and peptic ulcer disease, which can increase your risk of GI bleeding. Aspirin plus penicillin G increases the risk of penicillin G toxicity. Why? Because aspirin competes with penicillin G for renal tubular secretion. So imagine that this is your kidney. And this is the receptor that's going to the urine. Okay, anybody coming to pee? I'm, I'm going in through pee. Anybody want to come? Normally, you get rid of the penicillin G in the urine. But when there is aspirin, aspirin is good at kicking butt. So it will kick penicillin G's butt and it will bind to the same receptor that's going into the urine. When penicillin G is no longer going into the urine, it will stay in your bloodstream, increasing penicillin G toxicity. Aspirin plus vitamin C decreases the absorption of vitamin C because part of the absorption of vitamin C occurs in the stomach and aspirin just has destroyed the lining. Quest time. What's the most common cause of death? in salicylate poisoning or salicism. You know when you're negligent and you leave your baby to swallow 37 tablets of aspirin. This is called salicylism. What's the most common cause of death? Let me know in the comments and the answer is available on Patreon. I have a great comparison on my Patreon page called aspirin yay, aspirin nay, and it's available on Patreon for just a buck. It's basically cheap. It's just virtually nothing. Come on. And also I have the Perfect Snails Ultimate Notebook about lymphoma plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases. Patreon.com forward slash medicosis. That's it for today. In the next video, we'll talk about salicylate toxicity. So please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when the video is ready. Go to Facebook to get 90 plus cases called vignettes. <laughs> now you can get all of my video notes on Patreon.com 
forward slash metacosis you can download them and print them like these notes that i'm drawing right now you can download them and they are yours forever baby thanks for watching be safe stay happy and study hard this is metacosis perfect nails where medicine makes perfect sense medicine and sense two words that don't come together like japanese burger or american sushi